definitely leave. Definitely a little out of practice. But let's see what happens. Oh, here we are on YouTube. Oh, my goodness. What kind of stuff can I write in this right now? I can't write anything in it yet, huh? Edit video? No, we don't want to do any of that. So I can't put any stuff into this yet. All right, I understand. Let's get out of this view right now. I suspect new, whoa, close. Okay, so let's go back over here. Let's go back to share the screen. Let's do that. Bam. And we should see. Look at that. We're seeing a treasure chest. Yes, sir. Isn't that cool? <gasps> Look at that. Oh, itchy, 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 itchy. Well, what I thought I would do was to relax and let's see if I can't move things around here. There we go. Wanted to relax and look at, you know, be distracted, I guess is the word we're looking for. So what we're seeing on screen is 3D bronze. Awesome freaking work. Look at that. I mean, that is really something, isn't it? And he's even got the little frog. Super fantastic. Great work. Incredible detail. Who know, must have taken hours for one of these just to print. And these were gifts at the uh, poker tournament in Las Vegas. Isn't that cool? And now what's so what's also going on is on the inside, you'll see this little little lip. So there's an insert that would have a little uh, a uh, little fragment of uh, gold dust, which is super, super cool of uh, K-Pro to have purchased on her own and then take apart and give away fragments. So that's like just throwing away $1,400, which is extraordinarily generous. I mean, these things were, it was just, you know, amazing that that she should do that. I always thought that was really impressive. Freaked me out, but, I, you know, super, super nice for them to do that and give them away. Nemo really uh, touched Capro's heart and, you know, she went re really was gushing about how nice Nemo was to uh, be patient with her and in a time, in a necessary time. So I thought that was cool. So Really thought that was cool. This is the other thing, I, you know, which I'll keep in there is uh, the cool coin that. Uh, what's his name? <laughs> Mr. Cow. Mr. Cow put in there. Isn't that cool? Very cool. This is also a, a gift from uh, Copper Dan, which is one of Forrest Fenn's uh, arrowheads. Super neat, super sharp, too. It's like brand new. I mean, the edge on that is really intense. So just wanted to make sure that I acknowledge such a uh, very cool thing from um, Capro and Mike at the uh, the tournament. That's what they did. They gave these away, which I thought, you know, that's just super nice. So I wanted to make sure they acknowledged on that. I mean, the tournament and all that does take a lot of work to make all happen. So you know, God bless him for doing all that, you know, the coolest. All right, let me make sure I'm getting my screens together here so I can pay attention to what I have got going on. So let's see here. I got to push some buttons up here. That's kind of neat. 
This is working good enough. So, what I have done, obviously, is taken the, the poem here, and I numbered it. Now, there's a couple of reasons why I did that. The idea came from Mr. Fenn himself. Uh, you'll notice that the it says the answer. The answer I, Roman numeral I. I thought that was kind of interesting. The answer I already know. When I was a kid, I was called ready. So to me, ready doesn't mean just, you know, ready to go or all ready to go. It also means the color red. Interesting that the color red is also TI red, like titanium red. But nonetheless, let's focus on, on the word here, the answer I. And the numbers that are associated with it coming from the bottom up and the top down. So the relevance of that and where I got this idea is actually from page 49. I mean, excuse me, page 40, 41, 42, 41. So here are these pages. And here it is. Here's the page number at the top. Right? Here's the book. Let me see if I can't do all these things at once here. So the book itself, right here, clearly says page 40, 41. Okay? And right down here it says starting at. See that? It says starting at. I mean, it's a trip that it says the 10 most asked for songs of the week were played, starting at, right? Period. So right there it says it's the 10th word. Uh, well, that's fascinating. That's the 10th word. Okay. So the 10th word, we're counting down the 10th word. Okay. Well, it says starting at, and then the next page, it says the bottom, the bottom. Focus, right, as a crescendo. Oh, wow, okay. All right, so it says starting at the bottom. So then, to me, that seems like we're, we're counting from the bottom up, where you're counting down, you're counting down the, the top 10 tunes. So what that is is then translates to numbering the poem which brings us to these pages right here, right? And all the way to page 42, which I thought, well, that's all very, very interesting. Big capital letter I on that page as well. So that got me on a whole bunch of ideas on what, what it could, what could be more than just words. What would be, what would be subtle hints and clues that would be overlooked that are right here in front of us? And to me, that seemed like a really cool thing, especially since answer from the top down is 126. Page 126, well, let's go see what that is. What do you know? We're looking at the big treasure. So is the answer about the treasure? Seems like maybe that's a kind of a hint. Right? I mean, 126, and then it, it goes on to I already know. Well, there's letter I again. So, and it says, in my, in my mind, I've always been the best in the world at collecting fun things. My career started soda pop caps. That word my shows up a bunch. So I thought, well, that's maybe that's a big hint. And coincidentally, this is a blow up of the postmark right there. And it's the only one in it's the only postmark with red ink. Now these are a whole bunch of things that seemed what, more than coincidental? They seem sort of relevant. They seem like perhaps it's a thing worth pursuing. And I know that FE is iron, right? On the periodic table, FE is iron, as in sliding down 
the stairs, what do you call it? The fire escape and getting rust all over his rear end. So why would I go to the periodic table? You know, why would you do that all of a sudden? What makes you just jump to the periodic table? Well, previous pages, 18 and 19 seemed extraordinarily significant. 18 and 19, there's no page numbers here. And these little windows sure do look like the periodic table. And I thought, well, maybe there's a hint about that on here. Well, if you count over, that comes out to be titanium. And then his brother Skippy turns out to be tin. And dad over here turns out to be kryptonite. You know, because he's like his hero, as Superman, right? And this is an elementary school, as in table of elements. So to me, this seems like a whole bunch of really interesting hints that would take you somewhere. Look at this, 1936. 36 is kryptonite. Oh, it's not. 30, yeah, 5, 6. Yeah, 36 is kryptonite. So just seemed like there was a bunch of really subtle, subtle hits, hints about what's going on here, you know. P would be uh, 15. Page 15 is extraordinarily interesting. By the way, on page 15, some fascinating little facts about that. Whoops, zoomed right past it. Is there a page number on page 15? 14. There's no page number on page 15 either. And what's fascinating is 79. Well, Look at this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ninth. So we're on the ninth row from the bottom up, and it's the 79th word. And you see where it says 10 right here, written? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it just seems like there's a bunch of really subtle freaking things in here that are just that, they're subtle. Now, collectively, a whole bunch of subtlety equals an actual solid something or other. So if page is 18 and 19, and what is 18? 18 is, excuse me, 18 is AR, and 19 is K. That says KR or KA, car. That's fascinating. What's really fascinating about, about 18 and 19 is that the heavy load is 39. And so is the heavy load on 18. Where am I? Here's my camera. So they both are 39. So, wow, that's really interesting because on our row of the answer, 39 is that already. So it's like if you look at lines, like he talks about fishing line, the answer I already know. No is knowledge, answer. So I already, the answer I already know. That's an interesting deal. We also know that nine is a hint. So I don't know. Interesting. All this stuff collectively is interesting. By the way, the word TH shows up or the word the shows up nine times in here. I thought that was interesting. I think the letter, I think I also shows up. But I digress. Let's focus in on the answer I already know. Because we were hinted at counting from the bottom up. It shows up at 42, 41, 40, etc. So if we go to those pages, and he talks about the top 10 most in music, and we're on page 40, I wonder, what, uh, I wonder if that's got any re relevance to a date like uh, 1940. Would there be anything around that? Well, I already printed 1941 because over here it says starting at the bottom and then everyone would guess which song. So on page 41, he talks more about guessing what song it is. And number 20 is Cool Water. And Cool Water sure sounds, where, so it sounds like where warm water would halt. So it kind of refers back to what's going on 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 the on the line 26 27 from the top 
38, 39, 37 from the bottom up. Anyways, warm water halts, cool water begins. Yeah, that sounds very interesting. And then, of course, if I can do some clicking, I can show you what the top songs are for the year 1940 and the year 1939. There's that nine again. He would be nine years old. Just seems like those are those are ideas on where what hints and clues are. By the way, did you know what Terry scant is? It's a geometry term, right? Here's a Terry point. Terry point is finding parts of a where the uh, what do you call it? The apex of triangles, right? And scant. And there's a scant line, which you can all, which is another way of using lines. So Terry point and and you know. Terry Scant to me was a way of referring to lines, to the very least lines. And he's talking about fishing line and and et cetera, et cetera, like that. So it just seems like, you know, thinking subtly, very subtly, what is he what is he saying? Also on this page, you'll notice that he's looking up. Well, what is he looking at? Lo and behold, he's looking at eight o'clock. That's interesting. So is it about what he's looking at? And it's my father. He's looking at his father. The word my is very interesting. You know, I'll show you why my is interesting. Because the answer I already know. So why is 39? And we're looking at 1939, which shows up, by the way, the number 39 shows up many places in the postmarks and it's a letter y if you've been wise let's look at that for a second i'm gonna stand up and touch my ipad to get that so you have the letter y and you also have 40 41 and 42 etc right but y is 39 Okay, and the heavy load is 88. Well, let's see if there's a hint around that. Let's see if I can't do this without standing up. Yeah, I can kind of crank this around. So here we are on page 40. Let's look at page 39. I'm just going to roll over to page 39. Being gentle, being very gentle. Where he's talking about radio shows. And the eighth word in the eighth chapter is eight o'clock again. Now, really? Well, heavy load again is 88. So we're on page 39, we're seeing 88. To me, that really kind of talks about why. And then, well, I didn't I didn't find anything that was relatable about. 40 or 41, but 42, what is that in the, what is that in my, in my poem layout here? Always back to the poem, right? The poem is new, Roman numeral, well, it says the, for the is 42, right? So already is 39, 40I answer the, okay, that's, Interesting, but where's any kind of confirmation here, right? So on page 42, we're hearing gypsies dancing around, right? Definitely gypsies, and we have a postmark. But gypsies are dancing around. We got a we're hearing trains. I mean, sure, there's some songs over here that are about the A train on on page 40, on music chart 41. But I'm thinking there's got to be something more, more, more substantial, right? Well, what, what what's going on here? We're seeing gypsies dancing. Where does, how does this get us anywhere? I mean, we definitely have this song, Cool Water. It's really hard to show all this stuff. 
by the sons of the pioneer, which is the box itself. And we're seeing the box, you know, the treasure is 22 and the box is 20. I wonder what, uh, what are we doing here? So we we're looking at gold on page 39, right? And we're seeing the, the key on the table. So to me, a table like table of contents, Seems like there's a few things like that that are being knocked around. A couple ideas. Hey, Huli. Thanks, Huli. Nice to see you again. JK. Trolling. We have trollers. Ah, what it is. I don't care. I didn't want to look at the news. So we're looking at this. <laughs> so anyway, these are the things that stand out. These are hints and clues. I'm not trying to take you to a location. I'm trying to show you what is a hint, what is a clue. To me, these seem like they're standing out and they're on the edges. We're seeing a brass box. Well, that definitely takes part of the periodic table. We're seeing gold, which is 79 AU. So these are these are things that are there. Well, let's let's get some more detail. Let's see if we can't uh, go to share the page over here and ditch this. Oh my goodness, there's so many things in the way. Let's get this out of the way. Oh, that was so here we're at, here we are, are at 41 let's put that back up i didn't mean to do that so here's 1939 judy garland over the rainbow wow doesn't he talk about rainbows and there it is in 1939 okay fascinating what else well, i don't know that one really stood out to me so this is a music chart for 1939 and here's over the rainbow okay that seems like a subtle hint 1940, we got Glenn Miller, who, by the way, died in a plane crash. What song does he have? Imagination on 22. And we're on 1940. Is that right? So those two words right there, well, mostly Glenn Miller. That just seems really, really interesting. But what's a 1940? Is there, we got another, we got another year. Let's go to 1942. Bing Crosby. White Christmas. Any other things there? Probably. I'm going really fast here. You all could definitely see what you can see on your own. But let's look at uh, let's look at something over here. I got to move things around so I can actually click. Whoa! So there's a Norman Rockwell. That's an interesting deal, right? What page do we see that on? Well, we see that on page. 74 no excuse me it's page 71 70 and 71 All right and this is this is the artwork for over there over there is one of the songs and yankee doodle dandy and yankee doodle dandy is part of give my regards to broadway this was a big jimmy cagney monster monster film um what else he says uh give my regards to broadway which is 42nd avenue so real subtle hints you would have to actually listen to the music or listen to all the stuff that he's that, that he's going over yankee doodle dandy i mean he does doodles right he does he draws doodles so george m cohan quite the entertainer that would be you know massively overlooked and what do you know it came out in 1942 so mm, very big hints to me again very subtle i think the the coolest one is cool water is the b-side to gypsies you know gypsy from fleetwood mac look how he's looking back right the album is called mirage you know, like what happens when you look down at the end of the road. So there's a bunch of subtlety, subtle, subtle, subtle hints. And then, of course, Cool Water is the Sons of the Pioneers from 19. Well, this is saying 36, but it hit the charts in 39. Okay, Bob Nolan, which, by the way, is also Roy Rogers is a part of that. I thought the time length on this was really cool. 42, 24. What? Yeah, I know. That's, that seems reachy, right? That seems really reachy, Dave. I know, but you know, and here's John Doss Pythos, 
right? John Doss. He's the one that said, up shit creek without a paddle. Who did the 42nd parallel? So 42 shows up a lot if you do just a little bit of clicking. You don't have to go too far off the reservation, right? These are, these are, this is literature and stuff that was very familiar to Mr. Fenn, especially if he's selling paintings. So here's, here's Don McLean, American Pie. Okay. All right. There's that, there's 71. Well, what's relevant about 71? Well, let's go back to clicky, clicky. Let's go back to over here, share screen. Boom. Getting better at this. Boom. And now the camera's going to take a second to engage. Right? Will it engage? It's engaging. Slowly, slowly engaging. Swim! Well, here we are. Oh, oh, we're looking at everything at once. Not good. Let's do this. Let's do this. Oops, we don't need to be. So here we are. Here we are on page 71. This is 1971. You see that thumb in the air? That's what this boy's doing right here. That's the same thumb in the air. Notice that it's the American flag, just like on John Doss Pathos. I mean, these are this is what subtlety is. Right? This is how this is what subtlety pie. Wasn't his mom wasn't he stealing pies? Again, 1971. Empty chairs where I sit. You know, I sit. He talks about on page 15, you know, where he sits. He sits with his father in chapter 21, page 119, right? Around the fire, which was a religious experience. That's the blaze. To me, these are what subtlety is. Now let's get to the thing that really melted my head. So 42 is M, and then 39 is Y. That's my. Like my war for me, or my treasure, my secret, my trove. Those, that's how many times my comes up in the poem, which I'm sure I've just lost. So it's a threshold moment. Now, that was really, to me, very important. The threshold moment in time, right? So you've got, you're seeing this is the, this is the drawing to Broadway, right? 42nd Street, Yankee Doodle Dandy, and we're seeing a fire. So we've got Blaze, and we've got 1971. And here's a trippy freaking thing. Did you notice, ever notice on this page right here that it says A&M on both, on flanking sides? A&M twice. A&M twice. Flanking. And it says was and then saw. I saw an A&M. A&M was. Notice how saw and was are one of those reversible words. Yeah, I thought that was really interesting. And then we talk about minutes and stuff, right? Thumb, minutes. Okay, interesting. So without going too far, far, far off a reservation, what's M and what's what's got that to do? What's what's A and M? Well, what do you know on the periodic table, A and M is 95. Well, what's relevant about 95? Well, Maybe page 95, maybe 1995. Just interesting that that 95 shows up. Just thought it was interesting. And it would be really easy to start spelling words, right? I mean, if you're using the periodic table as a bit of a part of a, I don't know, grid work, you have my, and then it's really easy to spell war. W-A-R, we already saw A-R show up again over here. So like my war for me, I think we're, I think there's a lot of hints and clues that are just right there in the titles of pages, which have no chapter numbers. So what I had done is I made my own table of contents. Then a couple of things stood out to me right away when I did this. Let me move my little mouse. Right away, what stood out, excuse me, is this side over here is where you're seeing postmarks. The absence of, of date is where there is no postmark, and I printed it in red. So where you see red, no postmark. 
the most strangest postmark is Skippy's because it's on the opposite side of the page. The only place in the book it's on the opposite side of the page. On the right-hand side, all of them are on the left. Okay, I thought, what does this mean? Well, it quickly spells the word Williams. If you take them all and you collect them, it spells the word William. Uh, okay, what's that got to do anything? All of them collectively add up to the chapters all add up to 88 and and it, alphabetically it comes out to 79. I don't know. All that stuff seems kind of thin. I thought this, this number 479 was really interesting, but mm, who knows? Mostly the word Williams because that's his brother, right? Marvin William Fenn. Marvin William Fenn Jr. is Skippy. So to me, Robin Williams, that shows up right away in Good Morning Vietnam, which is, you know, fighting the VC, which is known as Charlie. So just that kind of stuff right there is, is to me, what Fenn said, if you did the work, if you, if you dove into the, all these kind of little details, right? Gold is 79, and he mentions 79. It's just, you know, many, many interesting things. Did you ever notice the little face? Look at that little face right there. Isn't that cool? I mean, he intentionally chose that stone for a face, which is right on these, these lines, which are, which are at, you know, what's the degrees of this line right here? Right? These, there's tilted, tilted photographs and things like that, which seemed rather significant. You know, more about numbers. You know, on page 10, page 10, just, I digress, but I can't help it. Where's page 10? Oops, 131, which is back to the cows, milking cows, which is a whole bunch of stuff about socks. Socks, you know, socks is also President Clinton's cat. Socks the cat, which is the 42nd president. Yeah, I know. Probably reaching. But, you know, I found that to be interesting. How many times that shows up. So where am I? I'm trying to get to page 10. There's an interesting thing on page 10. 9. Capital I again on page 9. But right here, it says 4. It says 6 by 4 inches. You know, what's 6 by 4 inches? What's the relevance of 6 by 4? Well, there are only three 6 by 4 photographs in the book. There's only three six by four photographs, and perhaps the pages those are on are relevant. That's photo drive up, you know, is an era. What year was photo drive up? Why, why do I think photographs are relevant? Well, right here, Peggy. She's the only color photograph in here, and that's Kodachrome. Kodachrome is on the periodic table. It's, you know, it's how you make color photographs. So, those are the things that stand out to me that get you to places that are relevant. Page 142. Hmm. Ode to Peggy. And on and on. Why is there a can on a Coke? Why does this, why does he have this woman's cute little butt, which is also known as a can, on Coke cans? Freaking cute and hilarious. Is that a can can? It shows more than one can. Uh, it's funny. Why is there the same emblem that is on the Bell helicopter on a milk bottle? Because in the Vietnam War, the helicopters did milk runs. And I think that's what he's referring to with this, this lid, the, the butter, the dragonfly. You know, the three helicopters are from the same Bell helicopter company, right? And we're seeing nine bells in here. Is that trying to tell us about time? That's, you know, those kind of things. Why is there a why is there a frog on a on a cowbell? Is that because of the bellhop? <laughs> Which is Jerry Lewis, genius comedian. You know, stuff like that. To me, that is the that is the fun questions that keep us without jumping out to I don't know, buying stuffed animals and being delusional. This is actually in the book. This is actually stuff that is worth looking at. You know, what's going on with this this whole thing right here? There's so much going on in this drawing. And they're Norman Rockwells, right? And Bye Bye Miss American Pie. Wow, which is also Starry Starry Night, which is the background. Starry Starry Night, right? Which is a big hit from that American Pie. 
So to me, that seems like the fun of Mr. Fan. That is the genius of Mr. Fan. That is why it's so hard to step away from this. You know what I mean? That's There's a lot of that. Is he spelling words using the periodic table that are that are you know wonderfully hidden within the 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 you know crazy freaking text not text but the um where's my freaking poem <clears throat> my numbered poem here it is i'm gonna put a copy of this so you guys can print your own because this is a real pain in the ass <laughs> red from the bottom up black from the top down right and because we have two, where, where numbers co collide are fascinating. There's a story just in the numbers to the pages, to the missing chapter numbers. So there's a lot going on there. Just by, I mean, for instance, that's just down here to where answer is. I mean, the answer seems like a great place to start, right? But what about What about 42 at the top? Well, oddly enough, not far, but too far to walk. Man, that's 39. We tie in knots like knots in the rope that it's on page 111, 110, or knots that is in the that he couldn't get out of the house. I mean, is that on page 39? I dare not look. So not far, but too far to walk. Two is like also, and that is where 42 is. Two again, 44. That'd be Yellowstone. So we should see the number 44 repeat if we're trying to go to yellowstone if we are if this system is any kind of relevant it would take us to yellowstone which is 44 and that's not what we're seeing how about how about decibels right there that's 105 db is decibels d's i prayed for d's and that takes us to page maybe 110 possible hints and clues that are right there just kind of laying around that you could tie right to this skippy skippy i mean as i have gone right there as i have gone there gone in alone right there so those numbers right there all all lay out boom 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 fascinating stuff especially the olga t with olga do you know that that's a that's a Native American tribe, the Alagron? Let me see if I can actually pull this up. Stop that. Do this. Go here. Go to. Whoop. Okay, go here. Clicky, clicky, clicky down here to share. We're going to share this screen, and then we got to go to here. River runs through it. You know what's really trippy about river runs through it? The time. This is a Robert Redford movie. Look at that. One, two, three. You know, on page one, two, three, what do you get? You're seeing fish. Pages one, two, three. Oop, one, two, three. We're seeing fish. River runs through it is the fish, the page with all the pictures of the fish. Right? See, and there's no page numbers on there. No page numbers. Really interesting. Subtle hints, perhaps. Let's see if I can't find this Native American thing I was looking for. There's a mirage. The album, by the, which is the same drawing that's on page 99. Yankee Doodle Dandy, of course. Ooh, let's not go there. How much is that doggy in the window? Well, that's a little too soon. This would be Hound Dog. But we don't want to go there. We want the Alunga. Where would I put it? Big Yellow Taxi. That's where they paved everything. Summer of 42. Wow, that was a big deal movie. But this is what I'm looking for. Olga. Al I mean, it says Olga Allah. Olga. Now, this would be Native American tribe, which is all up in the, what does it say where they are? I believe it's up in the Wyoming area. But they've been so dispersed. So there's where they originated, and then there's where they got moved. And I thought that was really interesting. The circle, you know, the flag or their symbol. Ah, just found all that very interesting. Let's bail. Bail!
Did you know the solar eclipse of 2017 did not go through Yellowstone? <clears throat> so if you're thinking about the moon and all that kind of stuff, it went through Casper area. It did not go through Yellowstone. It just missed it. It stayed right, pretty much touched the 42nd parallel and then went on. 42nd parallel. Yeah, that's right. So, uh, you know, I find... I found that interesting because 2017 was like a really big year. I got to think Forrest probably thought that was a year it could end. Hop along, Cassidy. Lumberjack. Really? How trippy. No place for me. A song by Willie Nelson. And then the B side is Lumberjack. So Willie Nelson's first 45, Willie being a key word of William. And then, of course, Long Nabo Trail. And then my favorite <clears throat> right here. Fenway Park, Section 42, Road 37, Seat 21, known as the Red Seat. Yep, Fenway Park, which, by the way, is, of course, on the 42nd parallel. No, it's not. I thought I had it nearby. Yep, that's right. Fenway Park is on the 42nd parallel. I mean... Sure, maybe it's a wonderful coincidence, but I'm sure there's lots of happy little coincidences. Well, there you go. That's Those are some of the big chunks of stuff that I have found. They kind of, uh, I don't know. I, to me, I, it keeps this, it keeps this relevant. And, and you, with a whole bunch of diligence, it'll take you to a location. I mean, where's 4239 on a, on a, on numbers? Where does 4239 take you? Wouldn't that, seem some kind of relevant maybe yes maybe no let's see is there anybody out there paul where is warm water halts warm water halts well you want an actual location yeah i can take you to an actual location absolutely hi belt my dog is Jack. Hello, Jack Sleuth. Message deleted. Whoa, Hooli's taking care of stuff. She's out there. Wow, people are being rude, and she is managing rude people. God damn, she's busy. So I'm sure there's a bunch of people who think I'm just a heretic. I'm just a bloody heretic, right? Yeah, well, I'm not surprised. See, part of the reason no one's interested in me anymore is because I don't think... There's any, there is no evidence that Jack found it at all. There's more evidence that he's just a retriever. So I'm sure the court case was a lovely, convenient way of showing reasonable doubt and stopping the, the people like Barb. Can you imagine how many Barbs are out there? How many Barbs are out there? Isn't that a relevant question? How many Barbs are out there harassing the Fenn family? You know, how many? One could only guess, right? Well, what would be Home of Brown? What would, wouldn't Home of Brown have something to do with Charlie Brown since Charlie is the VC? And look at this killer number. Look at that 472 number. There's that 95 again. So if the zip code for Charles Schultz is the Home of Brown, what would it look like? Well, let's look at some numbers. Here's 4239, and the last number on the 105, which would be the listen, you know, it's DB. 105 is DB on the periodic table. So 472, well, that's what we're looking at. That would be the home of Brown right there. So we're seeing... Uh, and then 21 would be chapter 21, etc. I mean, there's a whole bunch of ways these numbers all jive. And then that takes us to a, a place where you see a dog in a window, just like it says on page 42. It doesn't say dog and window, but it says he stuck his head out the window on page 42, right? And then, of course, I can go to other pages and see where he talks about hound or whatever, which is on, etc. page 7. But you see that tree right there? 
a tree is really important because you can clearly see that from Google Earth. And when you click between the E's on Creek, well, that's where you get that number. And that's where you get the big crazy number of 4239-6421 gives you a Latin long, which would let you, which I mean, that's just astounding. They should go someplace and find Native American carvings in a place. And why, why this place? You know, what, what got me there? You know, doesn't he say X marks the spot? Or, oh, here's big X. This is Google Maps. There's your big X. Look at that. Isn't that a big X? Big X. Boom. Crazy huge X. And this is Road 61. Now, Road 61 is just outside of Casper. And by the way, we're looking at School Section Mountain right here. So this is 50 miles from Casper. School Section Mountain on Road 61 on BLM land on a face that looks like a coin, <clears throat> right? And to walk to right here, this is a mile, gentle walk. But I don't think it was actually out here. I think it was more over here where it's eye to eye. So where you see this little, little place where his eye would be, this is where it would be. And that is a much shorter distance, uh, pretty easy walk. So to me, this is also known as, uh, we're in Albany County, which is right on the fringe of uh, Carbon County which is, has some of the, the most crazy, crazy stuff that's happened out there. Old Mage Draw. When you talk about old biddies, old maids. So a whole bunch of words show up in this place on BLN land. That's, that to me is, more. there's more about this place in the poem than Yellowstone. Yellowstone doesn't really show up at all. I mean, here you have... You're looking at it. You're looking at Willie the Hound. You're looking at Snoopy. You could call it that, you know, you, that's a dog on a window. That's like a dog house, right? There's a bunch of ways you can, you can look at that. And with that big tree, which is that log, and there you have, there's the big hound right there, which I never saw the hound right away. It took me six trips out there to see the hound. I only saw the window, which is always a rare thing in nature. So, all the numbers take you to a to a place. It's not just out my ass. It's based on the information that's laying around right here. So the most important one is numbering the poem, which is what it basically says to do on page 40 and 41, where it says the answer, right? The answer. Number the poem. What do you get? More than words, more than just words. Heavy loads. Well, it's atomic weight. No paddle up your creek, John Dos Pesos. No, you know, there'll be no paddle up your creek. There'll be no paddle up shit creek. Right? Home of Brown, Charlie Brown. Where else? And it says, I mean, what's interesting is my secret, you know, there's that MY again, right? My secret, my treasure. My trove, three times, the word my, M-Y shows up. M-Y being, of course, 39, 40, or 42 and 39. So my war for me, I think that might be somewhat significant. Um, AM and FM, look at that. ES is, 99 is Einsteinium. I think there's a lot of stuff here that leads us to anywhere but Yellowstone. <laughs> so, I mean, if you had Barb on your tail, you know, looking at you, wouldn't you want to end the chase? I mean, good Lord, she's just one of how many? And she thinks Mr. Fenn is talking to her through scrapbooks and such? Come on, that's just completely frightening. And you had this idiot McCracken who thinks... You know, Mr. Fenn's doing this. And how this McCracken case even happened is is strange. Okay, by the way, seven. Well, on page seven, he says hound. Right? He says hound on page seven. Right at the very bottom of the page. 
and I def definitely think there's a hint about what's going on on this page here. But that'll that's just too hard for you all to comprehend. Remember, page 40 and 41, he talks about the music charts. And right there in the music chart, you know, Chattanooga Choo Choo is at the train he's hearing. Is another train song on page on chart number 42, et cetera, et cetera. Eight o'clock. What would be the relevance of eight o'clock? Could it be having to do with a compass? I mean, if you turn the page, if you turn the page like this, that becomes eight o'clock, doesn't it? The line down here, and that becomes eight o'clock. Eight o'clock on a compass comes out to be 42. How about that? So even what's on a compass, especially this kind of compass, which is what you would see on airplanes or gun sites or shit like that, right? O being east. Found this to be very interesting because the page numbers and the inner circle and the outer circle tend to uh, jive to chapters and then page numbers. Really kind of interesting. North, N-O. Wow, that's... Where did I see that already? Well, it shows up on the table. What table? Well, the periodic table. Right there, N7. I mean, of, thrill of the chase, eight and nine, right? I mean, that's really kind of north, east. look at that. I mean, it's north, south, east, Interesting, right? N-E, yeah, 10, neon. Oh, just seems like this is far more interesting than going off and chasing down something like D.B. Cooper. I mean, that's really a whole other thing. At least 42 takes us to a whole nother book, Too Far to Walk. That seems more... I mean, he wrote a whole book on too far, not far, but too far to walk. Seems like those kind of things would be more relevant to chase down than anything else I've heard lately. Because they are right here in the book. They are information without going really far, far away. You know, apply the numbers. Numbers would be like an architect, right? So if you're an architect, this would make you know more sense to have a layout. These are the things that pilots, architect, somebody who's making bronze would use. I mean, he does mention copper, iron, nickel, silver, gold. And then you talk about his oxygen mask and the blinking red light. I mean, there's just a lot going on there. Wasn't his brother a little, a little bit like a, a superhero? Well, that would be Superman, and that would be your kryptonite. Goes on and on and on. That seems more relevant, which gets you to a place that seems, again, more relevant than anywhere in Yellowstone, which is only because of a court case that even comes up. A court case makes us look at the potential of Yellowstone. So it's all the... The back, the 400 emails that Forrest answered five of, you know, he doesn't sound, he sounds like every, every other first year searcher looking around. Didn't hear, there's nothing there that, that stands out as any kind of significance. He, I mean, Jack himself admits in one of the emails he was frustrated and gave up on the whole bloody thing. So what's that about? <laughs> I mean... He even mentions BLM land in the book. I know he, I know he mentions Yellowstone, but how much time did Forrest spend out that way in Wyoming? Well, when he was 16 and 15, 16 and 17, it sounds like he was working for the tree army. And where would that have taken him? All over the state where he was planting trees. Planting trees, by the way, were all cloned. If he's planting lodgepole pines, that's, you know, a whole bunch of cloned trees. And that's technology from what, 1700s? I mean, plants have been cloned forever. It's not like it's new. It's just a new term to you all. So, hmm. 
why a why a cross on on page why is there a cross you know intersection is there an intersection going on here it's not just jc so i don't know what did forest try to where is forest trying to take us out there in wyoming someplace far more interesting i'm going to guess you know stuff like that that's what i'm thinking well i must say um we all got jacked <laughs> yes i think we can agree that we definitely got messed with uh i mean if you found it how could you not celebrate it and again why would you bring the chest to forest that seems so bizarre i i found it and now i'm bringing it to you uh and there's nothing about mr mr jack stoof that that is that makes any kind of sense uh he you know there's a supposed video that jack has made yeah it's not real there's nothing from Mr. Mr. Jack Stoof. Here's my thought. Jack Stoof is probably a relative. I know he's the same age as Shiloh. So who else would you have find it, right? Who else would you tell to go retrieve this chest? You know, you would have you would only trust a family member. Otherwise, you know, you're not gonna feel good about sending money out there to some just would be so and so so i got a feeling jack stoof is probably a family member and a damn good reason why he'd be out of the country <laughs> out of here so those kind of the questions that seem more relevant right numbering the poem which i'll put a copy of so you all can do it yourself and see how it all comes together see if it jives for you or not but it's if you're going to go in confidence to a location, you would want to, it's, it's like if I'm, if I'm going to go to Huli's house, she's going to give me an address and it starts with numbers. So if there's, if you're going to go with confidence to somebody's location, it starts with numbers, right? Every, every time. So to me, home of Brown clearly is Charlie Brown which would be Snoopy's doghouse. Snoopy's doghouse is Charles Saltz's zip code, right? I mean, isn't that freaking, I found that just to be the funniest, most clever thing ever. Charles Schultz zip code. Isn't that freaking neato? And it's number five. The kid's name was number five in short. And we know page number five is definitely a trip within the book, right? Five aces. Ah, 1953, 1960, 1963. The character debuted in September 30, 1963. Does that mean I go to page number 63 and get some kind of confirmation about number five? Who knows? The fact that it's, you know, we showed up in Snoopy, I thought was very interesting. By the way, the, the character number five has four other siblings or three other siblings, which are known as three and four, <laughs> which is hilarious. Subtlety, my dears, subtlety, subtleties, right? Do the work, he said, do the work. So to me, what's a major pain in the arse? Numbering the poem. So, okay, Wes, so number the poem, and I'll put a copy of this up on the... Uh, on this thing here at the end, I'm pretty sure I can do that. I think there'll be a, a, a JPEG that you will be able to click on and have yourself. And I want people to do their own little research and see what these numbers mean. The fact that the word my, M-Y, wise, is 39, and 39 definitely is page 39, <laughs> letter I, as in Roman numeral I, as in counting, right? One, two, three is, you know, is three I's. Four is IV. V is five. Very interesting, all that kind of stuff. And then, of course, going to the music charts. 
I should put a click. I'll put a link on that so you can go to your own music music charts, right? So to me, this is staying within the realm of what he's talking about. He talks about counting down the top 10. The 10th word is number 10 from the very bottom of that page. At the very top, it says eight o'clock. It's the eighth word at the top of the page. On page 39, eight o'clock is the eighth word. So we're seeing this word being repeated. We're seeing numbers come up as if you're counting them down. So wonderful hints to to get you into locations or into a concept of number or word counting. I guess you would just call it word counting. Again, Huli, thank you very much for, for showing up and pushing all the buttons that are necessary. I know I'm a heretic. I'm a, they, I'm a heretic and, and people are distancing themselves from me because I believe Jack is... He's a real person, but I definitely think he's definitely like a relative. You know, probably one of the husbands, one of the daughter's husband's, you know, nephew, relative or something like that. Because there's nothing Jack said that was any different than, other, than the other thousands, if not tens of thousands of people who are, who have, who have written to Mr. Fenn. I mean, the fact that he wrote so many emails to me felt like he had some kind of special in and it was okay to harass him with emails. Um, that is a lot of 400 emails in from what, 2017, that'd be generous. It's more like from 2018 and Mr. Fenn only replied to five and that's being generous. I think it's less point being is that, you, if you go to Mr. Fenn, you're not going to get any kind of special treatment. You're not going to get any kind of secret in, in for information. Um, Dal knew that. Um, a few other friends of friends that we know that would visit Mr. Fenn, they knew better than to try to talk to him about such things because they're not going to get any real answers. Would Mr. Fenn actually say where this place was? I mean, if if Jack Stoof legitimately solved this, that would be the conversation that would be on videotape between the two. And I promise that doesn't exist. There is no videotape of Mr. Fenn and Jack talking about hints and clues and how he came to such a location or what would the relevance be of said location. I would love to see that video, but it doesn't exist. Why? Because Jack never celebrated for a second anywhere that he found anything. He is a retriever. He was a trusted retriever and he got paid. That's all I, that's all I, I can't get past that. So that makes me a heretic. That makes me an outcast. People tolerate me and that's it. So I just, I just wanted to share why I numbered the poem because it's all over the book. <laughs> It is all over the book. Words and numbers come up. To me, what is in the book is a hint of what you should be doing to the poem. Um, places where it talks about fire, to me, is talking about the blaze. The blaze on, on page 119, where they danced around the fire. And there's, what are you seeing? You're seeing the house that was paid for. You're seeing the home. And then home of Brown. So seems like these are really important and home of brown by the way from num numbering from the bottom up is 117 so put in below the home of brown below being 119 uh pages uh, i believe yeah it's 118 and 119 are home of brown and so when you're seeing him talk about the home i mean it's an actual home it's an actual location it's an actual address it would have a zip code just like charles schultz <laughs> and his zip code in sebastopol becomes a name of a character in charlie brown and that number super significant whoops that's the wrong number whoops 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 that's a music chart this is the number look at that number that 472 right 95472. His name is number five. 
His full name is 95472. And those four digits land on a tree, a log, I should say, in BLM land as you're looking at a window. And he talks about a window on page 42 where he put his head out and would listen to the train. So to me, a bunch of stuff like that, it, you know, becomes relevant in its subtlety and collection of subtlety. You know, that's, that's what it comes down to. Instead of going off and thinking that you're seeing, I don't know, God in the rocks. I mean, I always see God in Yosemite, but that's a different story. <laughs> um, I am a heretic. I am the outcast. I cannot say thank you enough to uh, K-Pro and Cal for doing the event. I thought that was super, super kind, very sweet. And wow, that's a lot of, uh, you know, they spend a lot of money to make that happen. We all get to hang out in their hotel room and play cards. I mean, that's not cheap. That's a suite. That's, you know, 300, 400 a night. If they play a whole bunch of cards, you know, and then they lose that money and that becomes a free hotel room, still money. Um, soda pop, drinks, etc. all in the room. Extraordinarily generous. 3D bronze coming up with a box to hold the very fragment of gold dust. Oh yeah, gold dust, one of the songs on the Fleetwood Mac album. How about that? The very cover of the book where you see Mr. Fenn looking back. It's the same thing you're seeing Lindsay do on the album cover. So there's a whole bunch of hints to the Fleetwood Mac album. Subtlety, subtlety, a thing that is lost today. There is no subtlety. Subtlety is gone. Things to think about as you as we go forward into this strange world of never knowing what what the significant Jack would never know the significance of why it's out there. If you go through all this, go through all this nonsense to a location, your journey brings up a lot of questions, a lot of questions. Um, here's an interesting little factoid. Fenn spent three months every year starting at like one years old, right? So that's, that's a year of days in just by the time he's five or six years old. And then he, and then they rent or buy a place out there. So he has years of his life out there. Gold dust woman. Absolutely. And you're seeing, and Gypsy, that's yet another song from the album, Dancing Around, right? So, and then page 99, the drawing of the jet, that is a mirage. It's not one of the jets he's flying, that's a mirage. Mirage is also the, which is what the, the French, where did I get mirage? It's a French jet. When he sees the, the grave marker, it's a, it's a Frenchman. Well, that's referring to the the French, which were there before the Americans, and we jumped in. They had all kinds of airplanes out there before before we did. And then the two crosses, well, that looks more like uh, the windmills from Can Can. And then you're seeing a little can with a little butt on it. To me, these are little tiny subtle hints and not gross things. When he says he's in love with Yellowstone, uh, well, Yellowstone is also sulfur. It's also gold. So, you know, when he, when he talks about being in love, you know, he's in love, with a, he's in love with a place. That doesn't necessarily mean where he's going to put it. I got a feeling he's trying to put it in a place that's trying to tell us something. Well, what are we, what's a canopy of stars? We're looking at a, you know, the dog star would be Cirrus. When you look at Forrest Fenn's belt, it's the belt of Orion, right? It's one little red speck in a sea of turquoise, right? That to me is like the belt of Orion. Why are the horseshoes? The horseshoes to me is not Omegas. It's the opening of uh, Hee Haw, where you have the jackass who puts his hoofs up. I believe Forrest is that kind of sense of humor. It's less double Omega, more about Hee Haw, which is, again, great music, which was on the country charts, which is you know Johnny Cash, Willie Nelson, etc. all the music that he'd be listening to at Texas. Right. That was a great show in its day. I'm sure he's he's referring to these kind of references because of Norman Rockwell, Norman Rockwell, 
is a massive cultural reference. Talking about the top 10 of music, massive cultural reference. The man is quite aware of culture because he's selling paintings. The opening part of Chattanooga Choo Choo, um, is that not the train he's listening to out there? Et cetera, et cetera. I mean, I can go on and on and on. Um, word counting, I believe, is so relevant to what we're doing because it shows up so many times in the book, especially on page 15. I mean, there is a lot of numbers in page 15 that are relevant. That, are, that I think he's warming you up to what you should be looking for. Writ 10, and then the 10th word on page one on page 40 is the 10th word. Subtlety, man, subtlety. I mean, you, do, you, you, you guys do get that, right? So right over here, this is page 40. The 10th word from there over is, is I mean, excuse me, the 8th word is 8 o'clock. So eighth word, eight o'clock, that's 88. Uh, that sort of thing rolls around many a time. The bottom of the page, the 10th word again, where he says the top 10, well, that is the 10th word. So that's what subtlety looks like. And that's how you get these numbers. That's how we get the idea of numbering the poem. So each word has two numbers. Two numbers per word, and the answer takes us to the box of gold. Definitely seems extraordinarily relevant, right? The answer is gold. We're looking at the treasure chest, and what do you see when you see the treasure chest? Well, we're seeing a freaking box. We're seeing a bronze box. We're seeing 42 pounds in total there on the, on the table where there is a key. I mean, one can ex ignore these things that are just sitting there really obvious, or you can embrace them as subtlety and see where it takes you. To me, that is what he was trying to do. Yeah, there's a lot going on here. I mean, the word hint is from the, the word hint is 20, right? And hint of riches. I mean, it says hint of riches. Okay, well, hint is 20, riches is 22. Isn't the, doesn't the gold weigh 22 pounds? So perhaps the word, maybe 20 is a hint. And so, to, and so the number from the bottom is 147. Is that a hint? Page 145 could be a hint as well. See, that would be, that is the very definition of subtle. The table of elements. Where do those numbers fall? Well, just print yourself up a copy of this. Why? Why is 39? Okay. Page 39, the word eight is, eight, I mean, the, the word eight o'clock is the eighth word in the eighth chapter. So that's 88. Why on the periodic table is 88? The heavy load, the atomic weight, is 88. So you're on page 39 with 88 as the weight. So that's why. And you got page 42, which 42 shows up so many freaking ways. And that's M. Well, my, that's M-Y. 4239, my. Like my war or my treasure, my trove, my secret. Shows up three times in the poem. So maybe where the numbers are of that are relevant. My treasure is 10 and 11. Didn't we just hear that 10 was relevant? Etc., etc., etc. My secret is 16 and 17. My trove, I believe, is down here. I have a hard time. 119. Well, now we're back to Father with Banco. Trove. From the bottom, 48, 47. 47, trove. Wow, 47 is also silver on the table. Tiny little hints. Tiny, tiny little hints. The word my only shows up three times in this poem. So numbering the poem, table of elements, because elementary school, page 18 and 19, where there are no page numbers, one has got to take a 
a look at all of the little subtleties of parts and collectively jump to other subtle hints. I mean, this what I had what I did at, at first on this was think that it was big gross things, right? One one clue takes you to one really specific thing, right? And it's a con it's a collection of subtlety, and that's why it lasted so long. It's why it hasn't been figured out. It's a collection of subtlety. And subtlety is not in our world anymore. <laughs> so I'm going to put in here uh, a numbered copy, um, a link to a periodic table. Feel free to uh, look at it all you want yourself. Come to your own conclusions. I want to see a real subtle thing. Norman Rockwell did a perspective drawing here. Isn't that brilliant? And it's called Pies. Isn't that cool? License plate, by the way, is 39. I thought that was hilarious. But here's perspective. Perspective. And your little dog down there, too. And the whole thing is stopped because of a dog. Right? This would be one of Norman Rockwell's great paintings showing how the perspective is all brought to a dog and it's pies. Isn't that great? Subtleties and hints within Norman Rockwell, right? Now, if he brought you to a place where you see a howling dog like this and you're sitting on a slab and if slab is on page 32, which is in his pocket, where he's making things, right? So you're sitting on 32 and you're looking at this. Well, what's the relevance of 32? Well, back on your compass, 32 is south. So my compass is looking south and I'm looking at a dog and directly above this dog would be the dog star. So I think there's no coincidence that it brought to a Native American place where they were quite aware of dog star which is part of the belt of Orion, right? One of the brightest one of the brightest stars in the night sky. That to me seems like part of the reason that he wants to, to come to such location. What happens when you turn all the instruments off on your airplane? The compass still works. You can't turn off your magnetic north compass. So I should also put a link so you can print this up. There's a lot of fascinating things. Eight o'clock takes you to 42. So, bunch of really fascinating things going on there. And I think that's the subtlety Mr. Fenn was trying to, really trying to show us. And, and when I hear all these other things, it just seems to, to, to diminish the brilliance that he was doing here. I'm showing you overtly what he is saying. No place for me, right? There's a song right there by Willie, Willie Nelson. No place for the meek, no place for me. I mean, it's right there in a song, right? Which was Willie Nelson's first hit on a 45, uh, et cetera, et cetera. There's a whole bunch of little things like this that are just overlooked. He says he's, he's quite aware of the music charts on th three pages, I mean, because he says it on three pages, and those are the pages where it says the answer I already know. To me, that seems like that's an extraordinarily important thing to be looking at. You want to be looking at the music chart. Who? I mean, what kid in that era wasn't aware of what songs were great? I mean, Glenn Miller was a really big freaking deal, man. Billy Holiday, Artie Shaw. These are names that are escape escape today's child they don't they don't watch old movies like we were forced to do when we were kids that's all there was on right i mean billy holiday jimmy dorsey andrew sisters duke ellington do i mean over and who else ink spots harry james sons of the pioneers benny goodman i think forrest was trying to make 
a generation aware of what's no longer relevant. Just right there, he's talking about it. And the page numbers, 39, 40, 41. The answer I already know, 42. I mean, uh, 1939, let's look at that. I mean, you can't, you can't deny that stuff as being relevant because he talks about it so many times. The very pages that he's talking about are what is important, right? Boom, boom, let's go here, and then let's go here. What year is this? So 1942, White Christmas. Okay, well, we know that that's when he came home from the war was Christmas Eve, right? And then 1939, Over the Rainbow. Doesn't he talk about his rainbow right there on the very first line? Man. And then an extraordinarily culturally important song, which, by the way, refers to page 110 because of the, the Norman Rockwell, the problem we all live with, is strange fruit. What is a strange fruit that hangs from the tree? That would be black people that were hung. That's what this song is, extraordinarily controversial song. And the fact that it made it on the radio and it was hidden in the text was a huge deal. Huge, huge freaking deal. What's another important number? Well, we, don't, we know 39 is, right? 1939, he's nine years old. And then boom, we're going to jump to, to Chattanooga Choo Choo and we're going to jump to number 20, Cool Water which we know is part of a hint or a clue because he says so in the poem as those numbers. Well, how about, what's the other number, 40? 40 is another really great page because I believe imagination, 22 on that date, right? So that's 40. When he talks about 8 o'clock, what's going on at 8 o'clock? I am the breeze, the breeze and I. What other songs would be important? Blueberry Hill? I found my thrill. Trade winds, Bing Crosby, Andrea Sisters, Judy Garland. Ain't nobody's, I'm nobody's baby. <whistles> Woodpecker song. These are songs that are totally lost into time right now. Right? Imagination. Frank Sinatra, Tommy Dorsey. Wow. That's a big deal right there. <laughs> yep well just consider that there is a lot going on the very page that he talks about being significant are 40 and 41 right 39 40 41 42 all those pages right there where he talks about music there you go boom andrew sisters imagination 22 yeah and a lot of these are movies. A lot of these songs end up in movies. Super culturally importante, like Double Fantasy and Yoke and, uh, and In the End, The Love You Know. Uh, Fenway Park, which is on Parallel 42. You can't not ignore uh, John Dos Pethos and 42. This right here. This is where you get Shit Creek, Up Shit Creek Without a Paddle, the 42nd Parallel. That's a big deal book, this, this uh, what do you call it, trilogy. Big deal book in his day, right? And here's Fenway Park at 42 degrees. That's what it means to say Parallel 42, which is what this is right over here. Right? These are the guys on, you know, second about uh, on 42nd Avenue is the 42nd parallel. Subtlety that is completely missed, but right there in your face. You don't have to go any farther than just look at what he's talking about. There's the bloody sheet music done by Norman Rockwell. That's on page 71. Right? Which takes you to 42 and Yankee Doodle Dandy. Yet another thing he mentions, all the subtlety, all the subtlety, like a river runs through it. I mean, that's, you know, there's Redford and look at the time on that. One, two, three, pages one, two, three, all about fishing. It's all you see are pitches, pictures of 
fish. <laughs> right? I mean, there's, I can do this sort of thing a lot. And let's see, do we have all the list of songs down here? Yankee Doodle Dandy? Yeah, here we go. Over there is the name of, this is the sheet music that originally came out in 1917, George M. Cohan. But in 1942, when this came out, Yankee Doodle Dandy, where's the date? 1942, May 29, right down here. That's what it's referring to. This is putting all the dots together. He wanted you to understand some of his history, right? 1942, American music. I'm a Yankee Doodle Dandy, Yankee Doodle Do or Die, etc. And this was to, uh, over there, over there, uh, the bands are coming, the Yanks are coming. And that's when we came over and kicked the ass out of the uh, Hun, as it were. So culturally important stuff that is clearly overlooked. Here is the B-side to Gypsy is Cool Water, the 1939 song. Over here it says 36 because that's when it was released. It hit the charts in 39. So the B-side to Gypsy is Cool Water. I mean, this is genius. I can't make this stuff up. Cannot make this up. Iron Tail. Part of the Alogla, Alogla uh, Lakota tribe. Right, like Olga, T with Olga, Iron Tail, as in the guy that's on the freaking nickel. There he is, okay? The guy that's on the nickel. I know there was more than one, but the buffalo nickel was largely Iron Tail. This guy right here, 1905, from that tribe. Where do you think that's from, right? Where was the Lakota people? Along with the Dakotas. The Dakotas, Lakota. Lakota Sioux dog soldier. Huge, freaking massive warrior. Uh, you know, why, do you, why do you think they named all the helicopters? Which, by the way, all three helicopters in this book are all Native American named. All of them. The Black Hawk. The, uh, I don't have them memorized. I don't have the Native American names memorized of all the helicopters. But all three in this book are all Native American. Buffalo Nickel, right there. Super important word right there. Yeah, one of the subsidiaries of the fucking Lakota, which were all in the Wyoming, Dakota, Montana area, all up in that area. Really amazing, fantastic warriors. Uh, just super impressive hunters, warriors. I mean, you understand the Red Sash, right? The Red Sash was wicked, badass. Uh, these They would have a, uh, what do they call it, three meters? So they have a 10-foot long uh, red sash around their waist and they would take a knife or a spike drag it into the ground and the other end is tied to them and they defend that to the death period you aren't coming out of that alive nothing is more fierce than than that because he's sitting there with his war paint on and singing his death song in this circle wicked just wicked you can't, you cannot deny, talk about warriors without mentioning them. Gypsies. Yep. Stevie, who dances around like a gypsy. Stevie Nicks, 79. Yep. This was all Bella. Da yeah, well, this is, uh, this came out in 82. Page 82. It definitely gives you an acknowledgement. But, you know, on and on and on. On and on and on. That, to me, seems like music wizards. Yes, they were. Lindsay, truly amazing. So, to me, this is a a grander acknowledgement of Mr. Fenn's work than anything else I have heard. Uh, saying that some kind of, it was never out there and it's more metaphorical, that's irritating. But clearly, he didn't, he... Everything he has ever said, it, it, it was definitely out there in the freaking dirt. You had to figure out all this shit to go find it. 
Did Jack find it? Hell no. Jack would have definitely been the guy to celebrate how he got there. There's the book. There's the thing you want to talk about. Bringing it to Mr. Fenn sure sounds like he's just retrieving it. Nothing more. And then we got that killer trial. The trial just backs up his emails. And what does he, his e email say? That he's just tripping around Yellowstone and frustrated and can't figure it out. Well, what do you know? <laughs> you know, there's nothing. He's not tying anything within the poem to anything that Mr. Fenn has said to a location. I'm not, we don't, there's not a word of it. And why would you not celebrate that? Why would you not bring that forth as an important thing you have done as in you are proud? I digress. I mean, I don't want to, in other words, I'd rather think about this than all the other shit that's going on in the world because what's going on in the world is nothing but frightening. So I had time today, my internet works. I had a moment to kind of reach out and say hi. These are a few things one can put together on their own to come to your own conclusions. Is the home of Brown Charlie Brown? Why not? Charlie is the VC. He certainly would be a Brown. So what would be the significance of those numbers? Well, you would definitely go in confidence if you found a place where you can click on that actually equals all these numbers. That to me seems more relevant than anything I've heard. And what I have found out there was nothing short of jaw dropping. There's two, there's three, there's two log cabins, just like in the book. The, the numbers definitely coincide to, co uh, um, what do you call it? Compass headings as you're sitting there. I don't know. There's, there's so many things that come together and have not seen a single thing that is relevant about Yellowstone. No stick, no logs. Just, that's pathetic. Everything is, is so tiny compared to what Mr. Fenn put together. Unimaginative. Um, embarrassing. Um, I feel like I'm the only voice standing up for Mr. Fenn's genius, or else everybody else is really trying to knock him down. I mean, can you, can you blame Zoe? I mean, I think, I think Zoe and Carl came up with a half-assed plan, and then it all came together when COVID happened in 19. That, that 2019 winter was pure hell. Um, it was really cold. It was really a lot of snow up there. And Mr. Fenn was getting sicker. His wife is in hospice. It was definitely a hell of a time. Meanwhile, you've got Barb thinking that the Mr. Fenn is somehow joking and, and, and kidding with her in scrapbooks. And this is, this is just one woman that we, we know of. I mean, I've heard of other people talking about, you know, the excessive amount of emails, you know, just every day. And Fenn talks about that on camera, about how he get these ridiculous emails that were dry, that makes him not want to even look at his computer, but he had to. People breaking into the house, people thinking his house is there. One guy gets out of jail, goes back. Another guy with a backhoe is digging under a mountain and nearly buries himself. Four people die, maybe more. It's ridiculous. And this is going to go on. Dad's going to pass away, right? Dad's going to pass away here anytime. He's bloody 90 years old. Anything past 80 is a gift. Anything past 70 these days is a bloody gift, right? So here he is, 90 years old, 89 years old in, in 2019. And this idea comes up, you know, I could just, I could hear the conversation or the intervention where that had to come down. Of course, Dal would be mad. Dal won't say anything because he has great love and respect for the family. But I got a feeling he knows that it was retrieved. So he can't say anything. Jack can't say anything. He doesn't want to say anything to the degree that he left the bloody country. Shiloh wouldn't know anything. Why would he tell Shiloh? Shiloh's not going to, he will know the location, but he's not going to know the whys and the hows of why he picked this place. Maybe in stories of what he have, what has happened to him and what he experienced out there, came to, he got to hear in stories, but he's not going to hear a breakdown. Why would Fenn do that? That would be ridiculous. Um, why would he make a video of the breakdown of the poem and the clues 
when it wasn't earned, when it what when you don't know the relevance of the location. Why are there, you know, why carve dogs in rocks? Is it for the dog star? Is there more than that? What are the legends and stories that Native Americans are talking about? You can listen to some of them from a guy called Owl Man. Owl Man is Native American talking about the legends and stories from his tribe, which I believe is Cree. I think he might be from the Cree tribe. But by the way, the Native Americans that get from Santa Fe to Canada, up that, that, that corridor right there, really freaking intense. Nothing short of crazy, intense stories. Um, I recommend going to howtohunt.com and hearing some of these stories. Truly uh, amazing. Truly, truly amazing. Anyways, I wanted to stick mostly on to the fem, the Fen situation here because I just wanted to not have to type what what I have found is because I just can't express it in typing. I just kind of wanted to put it out in this kind of this kind of form. I am making something prettier and more of a story in an actual video, but I get so frustrated because there's a lot of story to tell and how to condense it all is becoming really freaking hard to do. So I don't know, just much love to everyone. Can't thank K Pro and everybody enough for uh, putting on that event. And I'm completely misunderstood on my take on that little fraction, that little gold frag. I don't want to be misinterpreted on that. I think it's very generous and very kind of them to do that. It just was horrified that the provenance was just destroyed in opening that up. Um, really freaked me out because to me i would just go buy a new computer <laughs> all my gear by the way is failing yet another reason that i'm not able to do this much this comp this laptop is failing uh thank you very much fucking apple for making such a shitty laptop this is the only year that's a shitty laptop to 2015 this is the only one they don't do any service on anymore because it's dying uh, I think the new stuff is coming out is genius. The new iMac is really genius. But $2,500 later. So I don't know if we'll be doing that. And it's going to snow Wednesday. Oh, and by the way, a solar flare happened today, yesterday. And it'll, it's going to hit probably tomorrow, the next day. So expect really bad weather. Uh, expect uh, cell phones to be dodgy. Expect your internet to go in and out. All that kind of stuff. Um, that's what's coming. Suspicious observer for all that kind of information. But some of that stuff is really kind of uh, heavy. So I wanted to stay light and look at the artistry of Mr. Fenn. Genius of Mr. Fenn. So thanks again, Huli, for uh, standing up and being in the background. You are very kind. Very kind. Very kind. And we are out of here. Pushing the buttons somewhere 